What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your audio sound way more professional, way cleaner inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out weekly videos helping you guys grow as creators. Woo, 2020, first tutorial of 2020. I'm super pumped. I've got a really good but basic tutorial for you guys today. I'm gonna to show you how to clean up your audio and post, make it sound a little more professional. I've gotten a lot of messages from people over the last couple weeks, the last couple months even, saying I need to make my audio sound better and I'm really wanting to do that in 2020. Don't worry guys, it's not as intimidating as it seems. It's actually very simple and you will get a really good, clean and professional result out of it. Let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve and we'll go from there. So obviously the first thing you're gonna need is some audio clips. I'm just grabbing some footage from a GoPro review I did a while back. Uh, we're just gonna slap that in here because I know the audio is not fantastic on it. Of course, you're gonna get a better result if you have a third-party mic on top, like a Rode or a DD mic. It's going to give you a way better result in the end. This, I'm just doing straight out of the GoPro camera. It does not sound amazing, so let's see if we can fix that. So test number one, we're trying to see how this thing does while we're riding, vlogging. I don't even have a third-party mic hooked up to this thing. So you can tell it does not sound good at all. So what we're actually going to do is we're gonna hop into the Fairlight page right here. Now I do recommend if you're going to be doing audio on your videos, which you should be if you're not, uh, is I would save that to the end. I would do this as the last thing that you're going to do. Just like if you're going to color your footage, I recommend editing it first and then going in and start color correcting, adding LUTs, doing whatever you wanna do, effects on top. But I would go ahead and have your edit done. The same thing with Fairlight. I would go ahead and have your vlog or your video or tutorial, whatever it is, already cut, completely ready to go and then I would start working on the audio. You can even have the music underneath there on a separate timeline, but I would have everything pretty much roughed in, and then I would jump to the Fairlight tab. So what I like to do is make sure my loop is set. This is gonna get a little more complicated if you have multiple clips on there, but it gives you a rough idea. I would say if you have music, let's say on audio track two or three, I would go ahead and mute those. So you're just focusing on your talking. You're just focusing on the dialogue that's coming out. Then you can move to the audio underneath. So normally I'll play that through a couple times just to get a quick idea of what the audio already sounds like. I know I've heard it a whole bunch, especially if you've been editing for a while, but it's good to kind of shift your focus to just the audio. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on it and I'm actually gonna normalize the audio level. I would do this if you have multiple audio levels together, like all your talking head stuff, I would highlight all of those and then I would right click on it and do just the same as doing this instead of having to do each individual piece, which is why I said I would wait to do your audio to the very end just so you don't know which ones have been you know, normalized and what hasn't, it saves a lot of time if you just do all this together as one step at the end. This is going to depend on how hot your mic was, maybe the levels you were set at. I know for my talking head stuff, I only need to be like down one dB, that's it. But for this, I need to be down negative five dB. We're gonna go and hit normalize audio. What that's gonna do is it's just gonna bring all the levels up to be a little more balanced so we don't have a super loud spot and then a super quiet spot. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to the vocal channel, I'm gonna grab that and instead of dropping it right on the clip, I'm actually gonna grab it and drop it on audio timeline one. I recommend that all your audio dialogue be on one timeline. If you have to put it on two timelines, that's okay, but make sure you're remembering that you have audio on two timelines so you need to kind of mimic the same thing on the second audio line. Then what I like to do is play it through again and just start listening for what needs to be fixed. So test number one, we're trying to see how this thing does while we're riding, vlogging. I don't even have a third party mic hooked up to this thing. So test number one, we're trying to see how this thing does while we're riding, vlogging. I don't even have a third party mic hooked up to this thing. So test number one. There's really no exact science to going through and equalizing and setting vocal enhancers. The best way I've found that works for me is grabbing each one of these three dots. I'll pick one, I'll crank it all the way up or all the way down, and I'm trying to find the most disgusting sound coming out of that mic as I can. 
and then I will start dragging it the opposite way. You don't wanna to go too far because then it'll start to sound like maybe you're in a trash can or it's so muffled that you're underwater, unless that's what you're going for, but that's basically all I do. I go through and I tweak and go up and down. There's a whole lot more you can do with sound design, but really, I've kind of noticed just doing this very quick structure to it, it makes it sound way better. Like the audio coming out of this mic right here, if we have no effects on, it just sounds okay, but it really, it just, it, there's no punch to it. But if we turn the effects on that I did with the exact same method, it's really got some more punch and it's just got some oomph to it that just sounds better, cleaner. And it, in my opinion, it just sounds way better. Now, if you like everything that's been done to this audio and the effect that you did to it, great, fantastic. You can close out of it, you're done. Because we put it on audio timeline one instead of that individual clip, it's going to affect everything that's been done on audio timeline one. The only thing that I would say is if this is a mic or a setup that you use a lot, I highly recommend saving it. And what I would do is right here where it says default, we're actually gonna click the plus button next to it and we can name it. Then if you've got other projects or audio in the same project that's on a different timeline and you need to fix it and match it just the same, then all you gotta do is click the drop down menu, click the audio effect you saved, and then you're done, easy, ready to go. I've saved multiple, like for my talking head one or my vlogging one, you can have multiple saved in there and then you just resort back to them when you need them. It doesn't close out with this project, it saves into DaVinci Resolve. So no matter how many projects you're opening, you're still gonna have those effects in there. In my opinion, this is the quickest, easiest way just to get a nice audio punch sound. It sounds way more professional. Disclaimer, I am not a professional audio engineer. I do not do this for a living. I just kind of pick and choose what works for me and this has been the best result I've found for me. That's just easy, quick, turn around and you're done. There you go guys, an easy way to fix your audio inside DaVinci Resolve. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment below on some new things you wanna see coming out in 2020. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'm out.